Welcome back to the basics of digital audio signal processing and machine learning for audio using Python. This time is our first theoretical tutorial and as I explained before we will go through the example code and see what is the theory involved in this code. So our first code example was to load and play back a WAV file. We already went through this code in a very superficial way in the previous uh, tutorial and we are going to dive into the code later on, on the code explanation part. But now we will talk about the DSP theory that is involved when we run this code example. So the first most important thing that we need to pay attention here is sample rate. So we see that in this example we used something called a sample rate. We set some sample rate here. We have a sample rate here. We print the sampling rate here. Have in mind that sample rate has different names in literature. You can call it sample rate, sampling rate, sampling frequency. So they all mean the same thing and we're going to talk about it in a few minutes. Another thing that is important to pay attention is this audio data. Especially now we'll talk about these numbers here. So as I explained before, in this case, these numbers are going from minus one to one, but depending on the audio data you have, they can go in a different range. And we will talk about this. So with this, we are talking about the audio bit depth. And also it's related to the sampling rate, the length or the number of uh, the the size of this array and the length of this array, so how many samples we have. So we will start with this and we need to talk about sampling. So in a very short nutshell, sampling means converting an analog signal into a digital signal. We could have a whole series just covering sampling. So there are many different techniques, many different electronic circuits that deals specifically with converting analog to digital or digital to analog signals. But this is not the purpose of the series. However, to work with digital audio, we need to understand sampling and its um, consequences, its characteristics. Sampling in signal processing is transforming a continuous time signal to a discrete time signal. So imagining there is a car moving and you decide to take pictures of this car moving. So there are two things you need to decide. You need to decide how often you're going to take this picture. If you uh, want to make a video, for example, you need to have uh, 24 frames or pictures per second. So when you play, your eyes will believe that it's a continuous movement. If you have very few um, pictures, then you will see that this video is more like a kind of an animation and you will not feel like it's a continuous movement. There will be jumps. Or if you take too many pictures, maybe it's not needed because we have our eyes, a limitation of what can it um, we can trick our eyes and if with few pictures, it still seems that it's a continuous movement. But there is an advantage of if we take many pictures and we want to catch an exact moment of a car, we can kind of, let's call it zoom into our uh, pictures and see if we take less pictures, we have less possibilities of taking an exact moment. Another thing we need to decide is the quality of our pictures that we're going to store. So we can have a very high definition picture that will take a lot of space, or we can, depending on our application, we don't need that much detail. We can take pictures with a less resolution and then we will save space in memory. So this is just an analogy. So this works not with the distance, but also with voltage. So you have some voltage and you want to measure so you need to decide how often you measure and how you're going to store this measured data. And for audio, it's the same thing. We have sound, so sound waves moving in the air. We need somehow to convert this physical 
variable which sound into a um, voltage. So there are specific circuits like a microphone that do this conversion. Then we have voltage and we need to store this voltage somehow in a way that the computer can understand. So it's a sequence of numbers that represents this voltage. Therefore, we can use an analog to digital converter to achieve this and then we will have a sequence of numbers that will have these two important characteristics. How often we took this measurement and the, let's call it, depth of this, um, this measurement. So how big is this data that we are going to deal with? So as I mentioned, we could have a whole series that exists um, subjects that you can take in bachelor's course or master's course is called interface electronics that deals with going from one domain to another talking about quantization that we are going to see it a bit later talking about uh, sampling sampling frequencies bit depth and we have for example just an example is a sample and hold circuit that uh, is an analog device that samples or it captures a voltage of a continuous varying analog signal and holds its value at a constant level for a specified period of time. And we have, we can buy also the circuits. Example, here's a sample and hold integrated circuit, for example. Here we have a resistor ladder, and this resistor ladder will also perform some kind of digital to analog conversion, and we have different levels of um, voltage that will represent our signal. So depending on where our signal is, there will be some voltage in one of these um, resistors. So just in a nutshell, it's much more complicated than that. So if you want to dive into the world of sampling and quantization, analog to digital converter, digital to analog converter, I recommend that you look for a tutorial about this topic specifically. And as I mentioned before, quantization in mathematics and signal processing is the process of mapping input values from a large set, so from a continuous set, to output values in a countable or smaller set. So there will be a number of elements. So suppose you have your voltage that goes from minus one volt to one volt, but you have infinite numbers between these two. So you have minus 0 0.9999999 minus 0 0.95 but when we are going to measure we will not be able to use infinite values so we can decide for example that we'll have intervals of um, 1 millivolt or 100 millivolts and then we will just have values exactly in these intervals the same with sampling rate we cannot sample infinite number of points we need to decide okay every 10 milliseconds we are going to take one value. So this is an overview about sampling. A sample, we will call it a sample, that a value or a set of values at a point in time or space. We will have to come back to sampling later on. As it will appear in our code examples, then we will discuss things like Nyquist frequencies, about sampling theorem, because it's important to, to understand this in order to process audio. We are not going to cover how to convert it, but we need to understand once it's converted, what does it mean? Let's just move a bit more. So usually digital audio uses something called postcode modulation. And we can talk about this in future tutorials. There will be some example about postcode modulation. But if you are already a bit more advanced, I have a full tutorial based on the subject taught at the master's degree at the Ilmenau University of Technology that deals exactly with audio coding. So there are many ways how we can represent audio data. PCM modulation is one of them. And we will have things like MP3. We have things about um, other codecs. But this is, um, I will leave the link here if you are interested in knowing more about this, you can check it out. But it's a subject for the master's degree, so it will require already some background in signal processing.